think is when I was about six years old, uh, I was so impressed by photos of the Earth seen from the moon, seen from space. I decided to be an explorer. I decided to be a scientist. I decided to be uh, a person who would know more about the world. I didn't think it was possible to be an astronaut, but I thought anyway I would try to model myself on the space program, go to university, stay athletic, take care of yourself, and become a reliable person who can make decisions. Over. Seen from space, the Earth is the most beautiful thing I've seen. It's obviously the only thing alive in the area. It's blue, glowing blue, with clouds moving. We can see northern lights around the poles, lightning storms somewhere, the cities at night. It's a constant spectacle. It is very touching to see the beautiful Earth. And I find it, at the same time, it looks strong and it looks fragile. So it may convince me that we have to take good care of her. Over. So in space we float because we are in free fall. The space station is going around the world like a satellite, a bit like the moon around the Earth. It is going forward so fast that it falls along the curve of the Earth. And we are inside it, falling at the same speed. So to us it looks like we're floating, but really we are falling. We're all falling together, but we're going forward so fast that the curve of our fall matches the curve of the Earth. And that's what it means to be on orbit. Over. Logan, we eat something that looks like camping food. We can eat food that comes from cans. We can eat food that's dehydrated and we just add water and it becomes normal food again. Or we can uh, eat square bars, things like that. Sometimes, whenever there's a resupply cargo spacecraft, we get fresh food. So this morning I had a grapefruit and tonight I'm going to have an apple. So we can eat uh, almost normal food. It's actually pretty good and pretty varied. Over. Yes, Nathan, actually I have experienced space sickness in the very beginning because it takes to your mind and body a while to adapt to the fact that there's no up or down. So it's a bit like being car sick or air sick. And so I concentrate on not moving my head and too much and uh, not moving up or down or twisting too much. And after about a few days, my body and my mind had already get accustomed to it. And now I am uh, completely natural up here. Over. Hey, Maya, we do a lot of experiments on uh, many different uh, subjects of science, like engineering, material science, technologies, astrophysics, but mostly about medicine. We do most of our experiments on ourselves. We like guinea pigs for experiments. And on uh, uh, remote medicine uh, technologies, how can uh, doctors help us hear from far away? And there, all these inventions can be helpful to people on the ground. For example, people who live in faraway regions. Over. My favorite pastime vector is to look at the Earth from a beautiful cupola window and take photos and try to guess where we are, like a little game of geography. And also I can uh, talk to my uh, family on the phone uh, and I can uh, read books or maybe watch movies, but by far what I prefer is look at the window. Over. So our spacesuit, so we have two spacesuits. First spacesuit we wear to inside the rocket, the Soyuz rocket. So I only wear that when I go up and when I come down. The other spacesuit, the big white spacesuit to go outside the space station, we will wear that very rarely. I'm going to wear my spacesuit next Monday uh, for a spacewalk, but it's very rare. We also wear it as a test to make sure that it works. Over. So we have to study many different languages. Everybody on board the space station has to speak at a minimum English 